Some good friends of mine have an eighth grade daughter whose class will be celebrating confirmation soon. It's all well and good, except that their daughter does not want to be confirmed. From what I understand through talking to mom, this young woman doesn't like what their school says about Jesus, that they make him some kind of rigid God figure with a vision much too small, much too tame. And this young woman has a a passion for the underdog, for the uniqueness of each person, and is not at all inspired by this version of Jesus they are presenting her. And you know what I say to that? You go, girl. Amen. There has always been a temptation to want to tame Jesus. Nice Jesus. Domesticated Jesus. Jesus who fits into the boxes in which we want him to fit. And we just call him out when we need him. And Jesus, he'll have none of it. Today, we see Jesus' wild side. Today, we see the fierceness in Jesus. Jesus, angry, overturns the tables of the money counters in the temple. Now, now those tables had their place. The bartering and selling in the temple region were actually somewhat helpful for the average pilgrim. They could find the animals needed for the sacrifice and the proper Jewish coins for the offering. The problem was that the system had begun to extort money from the poor to take advantage of them. And religious leaders were more and more making religion an exclusive club for their type, a club that you would not be welcome to if you were one of those people. And when he saw this, something fierce flared up in Jesus, something fierce and protective. Don't you be messing with these poor folks. My house shall be a house of prayer for all peoples. All people need their chance to connect with God, regardless of how much money they do or don't have. Wherever life has taken them in the past, you don't get in the way of their efforts to connect with God here ever. All these years later, too often, we too continue that narrowness, that selfishness, that blindness of those religious leaders. We too, too often, make religion an exclusive club for our kind. We give the subtle and often enough not so subtle impression that you're not welcome here if you're not one of us. You know, if you're LGBTQ, if you are a single parent, if you vote differently, if you don't pray like we pray, you know, if you just aren't how we think you should be. And Christ has the same reaction now as he did then. He wants to turn those tables over in our churches as well. Sadly, much of religion to this day has decided to portray Jesus as being angry about small and petty things, completely ignoring his true passion for the weightier matters that really matter to him. Justice for the poor. Mercy for the sinner. Welcome for the outcast. And regrettably, I've heard priests and deacons miss the whole point of this gospel and say stuff like, this shows that Jesus would be mad if 
he saw you were wearing shorts in church. Or that Jesus would be mad if you leave early. As if that was what this was about. Blah. That is so far from what Jesus is about. That is the small, rigid God figure that my young friend rightly rejects. Now, it's also probably true that some are just uncomfortable by this display of anger from Jesus. We kind of want to make Jesus meek and mild. Now, don't be mad, Jesus, but he is. There is a fierceness in Jesus when it comes to protecting the underdog, the outcast, and the poor. Now, I differentiate that from the toxic anger of our days. Way too many people are all too happy to vilify others and decide that it's okay to be mean. Jesus was never at all like that. And it's not okay for us either. The damage is just awful. Now, this is an anger that would lead him to do what was needed to protect those who needed it. Personally, I work hard to focus on my blessings and to reframe my thinking so that I'm not another person who walks around angry all the time. But I've come to know that God put some of the fierceness of Jesus in me when it comes to protecting people from being taken advantage of. If you want to make me mad, use the power you have over someone who is vulnerable. That's when you'll see that fierceness from me. Once I, I worked with a kid whose mom had gotten the kids away from an abusive dad. And this kid started acting out at school and said something threatening to some fellow students. I said, he couldn't do that. And he said through his tears, you have no idea what it's like to be held down by your dad and to be punched and punched. And I leaned in and said, no, I don't. And I tell you, if your dad tried to hurt you again, and I was anywhere near, he'd have to get through me first. And maybe he would. Maybe he'd beat the heck out of me. But I'd throw myself in front of him to protect you. And right now, I'm putting myself between you and the other kids. You can't talk about doing to them what your dad did to you. Use your anger. Use what you learn from this and use that power in you to protect others. Yes, Jesus threw himself in front of the evil of any person or any system that took advantage of the vulnerable. And he paid a price for it. They killed his body, but they could not and did not kill his spirit. There is a fierceness in this amazing and loving man with his incredible vision of a kingdom of love and justice for all that would not be killed, that would not be tamed. If I get a chance to talk to my friend's eighth grade daughter, I'll tell her, you go, girl. I, too, reject that false understanding of Jesus. Don't buy into it. And then I tell her, but do get confirmed. You know, some might portray a, a small Jesus, but they can't make him small. Jesus won't be limited. 
And in confirmation, you get a deepening in you of the real Jesus. The Jesus who danced and wept and laughed and fought for the underdog with a fierceness we don't even imagine. The Jesus who won't be tamed.